All right, so here I have um, a zero-sum game, and I'm going to introduce the concept of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Um, so uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is still Nash equilibrium. It's just some games do not have Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. And so we introduce the concept of strategy into a, a larger domain of strategies, which we call mixed strategies. Hopefully this pure versus mixed strategy thing is gonna become clearer. And here for this, as an example, I have a zero sum game, which sometimes we call matching pennies. Um, well, we call it zero sum game because the payoffs always add up to a constant number, which is zero in this case. So whatever the outcome is, uh, one player uh, wins means the other player loses. So here there is no clear winner or loser. So sometimes it's the player one, sometimes it's player two. So let me give you the story behind the game. So there are two players, player one and player two, or A, B, but I'm gonna call them player one and two. And each player has exactly the same strategies, left or right. Okay, you can take off this, think of this as like player one is going to either go uh, left, here's left, or right, and player two will also go either left or right. So they play this game simultaneously. If they both choose the same direction, left, left, or right, right, player one wins, player two loses, so the loser pays a dollar to the winner. All right, so for that reason, it's minus one for the win uh, loser, plus one for the winner. And uh, if they go in up opposite directions, well then player two wins and hence get a dollar and then player one loses and hence uh, he pays a dollar, okay? So the question is, is there any dominant strategy equilibrium in this game? The answer is no. Is there any Nash equilibrium in pure strategies? The answer is no. And then, well then, what is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium? And so we're gonna find that, okay. So the dominant strategy. Uh, remember the technique that we use? Uh, let's look at player one, because player one has the first numbers. We will be comparing the first numbers across rows because player one is a row player. So plus one is higher than minus one. So left is better strategy than right. If player two plays this column, however, if player two plays this column, meaning uh, he plays or right, well then here plus one versus minus one, so right is better than left. So sometimes light, uh, left is better, sometimes right is better. So there is no dominant strategy or dominated strategy for player one. This is a symmetric game in the sense that uh, when you put an error, uh, error here, I'm sorry, mirror here, uh, you'll see that this is minus one plus one, this is the opposite minus one plus one, okay? Um, so we should have the same thing for player two, but let's check that anyway. So because the second numbers belong to player two, we will be comparing the second numbers across columns because player two is a column player. So plus one versus minus one, clearly plus one is higher, so R is better than L. But here, L is better than R. So therefore, again, for player two, there is no dominant strategy. Okay, so as a result of this, there is no dominant strategy equilibrium. I cannot eliminate any of player one's or two's strategy. Question is, is there a Nash equilibrium in this game? Well, remember, in this game, players are supposed to write down uh, on, on a two separate rooms, on, they're gonna write down their strategies on a piece of paper left or right. You don't have the option of saying, oh, I don't know, or I can't choose, or uh, I, I'm gonna jump or go up rather than left or right. So these are not actions. You either have to choose left or right, never both though, okay? So these are pure strategies that you have. And so the, the underlying thing works only to find the uh, Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. So, if it happens that player one chooses left, all right, what is the strategy that makes player two not regretful? Well, it's R because plus one is, so if he chooses left, he will regret. So, so therefore R. If player one happens to choose right, however, what is the strategy that would make 
a player to uh, unregretful, I mean no regret, well it's left because plus one is higher than minus one. So symmetrically if player two happens to play left, what is the best response for player one? I mean no regret strategy, it's left. And here for player one, it's right. So as you see, there is no tuples that are both underlined, meaning whatever the outcome, there are four possible outcomes, whatever the outcome is, one of the players will certainly regret of his choice. So hence, there is no Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. Okay, so we learned two solution concepts, one dominant strategy equilibrium, two Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. But if this is a game between two rational players, do we have a theory that is going to make any prediction? Yes, we have, and we call it mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So what is mixed strategy? Well, we extend the notion of strategy. Remember, I said in this game, the players have two actions, go left or go right, okay? You can't choose both. But you know what? Here is the hypothetical exercise we do. Well, what if the players are allowed to write something like, well, if I uh, play this game 100 times, you know, P percent of the time I would go left, and one minus p percent of the time, I would go right. What if the players are allowed to? And then we randomly, according to those probabilities, we randomly select one of the, you know, either left or right, but with probability p and one minus p, we randomly determine which direction the player one is going to go. All right, so we extend the idea of strategy. So. It's no longer, the players are no longer uh, forced to choose left or right, but they can randomize, like, you know, sometimes here, sometimes there. So then the strategy becomes, tell me, what is the probability that you would go to left and what is the probability that you would go to right? All right, so that's how we define the strategy in, this, uh, in, in, in mixed strategies. So, as a result, what we do is we say, oh, okay, you know what? Let's call this P and this one minus P. So therefore P is the probability, right? Probability that player one uh, plays uh, left. And therefore the one minus P is the probability that player one plays right because there are only two actions you either go left or right. So if you go left with probability P, with one minus P probability, you would be going probably uh, uh, right, all right? And then player two, uh, one minus Q, all right? Well, P and Q may be different, may be the same, I don't know. We're gonna find that in equilibrium. And then Q is therefore probability that player, this is player, all right? Player two plays left and one minus Q is the probability that player two plays right, okay? So given that, a Nash equilibrium then, so, well, once I sort of extend the set of strategies, we now have infinitely many strategies, all right? I mean, you are free to choose any Q and I mean, player two can choose any Q. It's like 1% of the time I, I'm gonna go left or 99% of the time I'm gonna go left or so any P between zero one. So any P between zero one and any Q between zero one is actually gonna give us a strategy, all right? And so a strategy profile is gonna be PQ. So what is, so with some P probability, player one is going left, and with some Q probability, player two is also going left, all right? And so they're infinitely possible strategies of this huge game, like infinite by infinite metrics, in a sense, what is the Nash equilibrium? 
And so I applied, we applied exactly the same idea of Nash once again um, in this larger set of. All right, so we basically take a game, extend the set of strategies, and create a, a bigger game. And the only difference is that the number of actions becomes infinite. All right. And so of this new game, we calculate the Nash equilibrium. All right. So the, the Nash equilibrium of this new game, what is it? Well, the idea of the Nash is still remains intact. Um, given the player's actions, the other player best responses, meaning chooses his strategy, which is not going to cause any regret as if they observe the opponent's uh, strategy. All right? So imagine that the game is over. So imagine that these two guys come together, write on a piece of paper their strategies. In the original game, the strategies they have to write on a piece of paper is either left or right. But now in the extended game, they are allowed to write something like, oh, I'm going to go left with probability 40% and therefore right uh, uh, with 60%. So that's the strategy. So each player writes that strategy, P and Q, some P and some Q on a piece of paper, submit it. And then the game is over. And then the moderator of this game um, opens up those strategies and reveals the outcomes like, oh, Player one uh, chose to go left with 30% of the time. Player two chose to go left with 80% of the time. And as a result of this, the payoffs, the question is, the Nash equilibrium asks, uh, would any of the players regret his or her choice? It's like, are they going to say, oh, should, I should have played something else, given that I observe my opponent's action now. All right. So that's the sort of the standard uh, idea of Nash equilibrium. One more thing here, the payoffs are a bit complicated. It's like, what is the payoff if uh, for player one, if he chooses left? Uh, well, if he chooses left, his payoff is either plus one or minus one, right? Uh, but which one? Well, it depends on what player two does, but what player two does is random. So the player two is gonna play Q, I'm sorry, L with probability Q, and therefore player one is gonna get one with probability Q, and minus one with probability one minus Q. So what we do, or how we calculate the expected, um, the payoffs is what we call the expected payoff. All right, so given this sort of the introduction, uh, let me pause here. I'll continue in the next video and sort of solve this game because it's, it's, it's gonna take some time. Uh, so we need to do three things. One, calculate expected payoffs, all right? That's very, very important step. Uh, you cannot solve uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium without solving this step correctly. And then two, calculate uh, best response functions. We can skip this step. Uh, I will solve another example later where I just skip this step and, and basically jump to step three. Find mixed Nash equilibrium. All right. So in the next video, I'll, I'll use exactly the same example. Uh, I'm gonna calculate the expected payoffs. It's very critical. And then I'm gonna show the best response functions and then show how we find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, okay?